the feels and the emotional aspect were all up in this episode of Nuts in the Tire's Eye, Wrath of the Gods, Episode 7. And i got to say, finally, the flashback is over. But we did get some interesting information with a let left us hanging a little bit with what really went down. We still don't know, and I think that's kind of a good thing because I think certain aspects will be explained in the present time as we go along. We have Zeldris that's appeared in front of both Gothers and Dian. Dian's like, yo, you need to get out of here because if you can end the war, go ahead and do it. I'm wondering if that's what really happened. I'm, I'm assuming that's what really went down 3,000 years ago with the role, but he made a di different choice than Dian made. So that's kind of interesting. It's the same thing that happened to King. That's why he passed the test and returned. So the same thing happened with Dion. Pledged to actually fight fight Zelda. So that was kind of cool. Even though she was able to dance and actually harness the, the energy before she attacked. So she got in was about. The whole purpose of this test was about. But either way, Zelda was able to kick Daryl or Dion in the stomach. And because of that, seal of magic. So she couldn't use any of her techniques. You need to make a choice. Do you, do you want to die or do you want to choose to join me? Join the Ten Commandments. We know what Daryl did because he explained it. Like it, it appeared like there was no way Dianne could return because the way that Daryl explained it is like, regardless of what she chooses, she, she, she's not going to return. And Daryl wanted to know if he made the right choice because running away is like the shame for it. In this case, it, it was seemed impossible for Dianne, Dianne to return and the King obviously worried about this, like, look, you can't choose death no matter what, and it, to the point where he's, he's actually tearing up, and this is where the feel, this is where the feels and the emotional aspect of the episode kicks in to overdrive. It appears like Diablo's going to make the ultimate choice, the ultimate sacrifice to help out Gopher, right? But turns out no, because she immediately woke up, and she, and DeRoll's like, well, how did you pull that off? She obviously refused to join the commandment, so did she choose death? So how did she return? It seemed impossible. And Diane pointed out and very hilariously referenced like, Oh, I just ran away. I just ran away and I woke up. And that's how they passed the test. We couldn't find out that she did in fact have her memories restored thanks to Gopher. So that's what I, I thought that was going to be the case. And because of that, we got the confession. Number one, we got two makeout sessions between the two. That was kind of cool. That's how the test ended. Then we go, and we go into the forest, the Fairy King forest, where King and Dian. Uh, King thinks this is a dream. He wakes up, it's like, oh, that was a wonderful dream. I was actually on the verge of kissing Dian, and Dian was right ne next to him. Says, oh, you just passed out, and it wasn't a dream. So, and that's what she reveals. Like, my memories are restored from what they were. You made your promise, and I love you, King. And Dian and King. Returns his feelings towards Dion. So finally, the confession is there. They make out to enforce that fact. So that was cool. Like I said, the emotional aspect was there. But now the, the memories were stored. Now they can return to the rest of the sins. And that's what we got. So not before we got an emotional interaction between Garade and pretty much Galaxania, who realized he messed up with Ro. Garade was tearing up. And even King was like tearing up because he realized the situation. Like, he was once in the situation before with Barn and Elaine, and not knowing the situation, he labeled Barn a criminal. And there was a lot of development for King and Dion in this, but that alone I appreciate. It's like, oh, I, I made a selfish choice. I didn't realize. I did. I was scared to check if she was still alive, and because of that, I made a m mistake, and obviously became the command one of the Ten Commandments. This leaves an interesting parallel. An interesting dilemma because now the king and the now the king and Diane have shown the role and Galaxia they could have chosen a different path. Where's that going to leave them with the commandments? So that's going to be interesting. Also, Oslo, the guardian of King, and I, I suppose the guardian of Garade. We got a lot more exposition on that, and it turns out it's the reincarnation of Ro. Remember the last thing he said: I, even if I'm reincarnated, I want to be there to protect you. That's what we got. So Galaxidia realized this, and I don't think Garade did, because because uh, Oslo was actually acting hostile, very hostile towards Galaxidia to the point where it finally calmed down. So that's kind of cool. We got that explained. Oh man, everything just comes full circle. So I love it. 
Uh, we don't really know what happened with Gopher in the past because he said he's going to stop the war, but Zeldris is there to kill him because he because he betrayed the commandments. And we also found out he has the power of the Demon King, which I'm sure Meliodas does too, as well as Estherosa. I was wrong, dead wrong on Meliodas stepping in to help out to help out Dian. Turns out Dian actually tried to fight himself, so I, I so I got to give her credit for that. Flashbacks over, the test is over. And then King and Dion's like, yeah, and Dion's like, yo, let's go to this rest of the Seven Deadly Sins. We are still a part of them. King's like, was like, uh, and Gopher's not as horrible as she's made it seem because he returned the store my memories back to what they were. And there's where King acknowledges, okay, maybe it's a bit harsh on Gopher not realizing the situation. So, really, Dizzy has a newfound perspective and respect for Meliodas, but now for Gopher as well. Thanks to what Dion learned, and Dion being the one to promise that he was gonna, he's gonna guide Gopher in the right direction. Now they can return to the sins with a new found development. So I love it. Both of them got what they wanted. Dion has learned to have, how to dance the way that they're all sort of did, and now King, thanks to his confession, has wins. And I think that was the whole point of this pur the purpose of this to begin with. Yes, the tiny and even Bonham Elio just made fun of it, but. That was cut. That was cut cool. They're making steps in the right direction, and now we can get into the bigger story here in season three. So I can't wait to see what that is. Oh, we'll send some red to, to where, where the rest of the five sins are waiting on top of the castle, where there's the moon. The sins will reunite. We heard that prophecy before, and I do like the uh, I do like how Bartha was like trying to like explain this again, but Merlin was already on it. It's like, yeah, we're on top of the castle. When there's a moon, the rest of the sins will reunite, and there you see the you see the Paul, you see Oslo, and there you see King Dian's ass falling right on top of Meliodas and the rest of the sins. And what a reunion! After all this time, first time in season three, they all the sins are together for the first time in a while. So that was that was cool. The expression of 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 oh, good grief in between the rest of the sins and King and Dion hilariously thinking that Meliodas was still dead. I wish the captain was still alive. And the captain's like, Meliodas was like, yo, I'm still alive, I'm just under your ass here. So, that was that was funny. Thinking it was a ghost. And meanwhile, Bartha has been completely being ignored by the situation. He's trying to, try to explain what's going on here. But there's a, the, the, the gag is there, so I thought that was hilarious. King apologizes to Meliodas. Like, I'm, I, made, I said some stupid stuff. I didn't realize anything about you. So, I apologize for that. And I, I appreciate that. But Meliodas and Bond was like all up and, and dissing King with his wings. Like that, that was funny. It's like, oh, that's so tiny. You're becoming a man now. So that was great. She got her memories restored. And Gopher Go was like, how could you? They're, they're not supposed to return ever. But then she realized, then she spilled the beans that in the past I helped you, your father out. And because of that, he restored my memories back to normal. So I, I like that. So now the sins are officially reunited. Only for the time being, comes Bartra and he actually mentioned he has the heart of magic or the magic of hearts, which belongs to Gopher, which which I'm I'm assuming will restore his heart to what it was before. But then he sees a vision of what looks to be his parents, and then he just darts off immediately. As quick as the re the reunited, they're also apart because Gopher goes on his own, and then. I love how Melia just says the number four rule within the sins. If somebody, you know, if one of our friends is, is in crisis, our teammates are in crisis, we help them out at full power. So I love that. They go after him, and that's how the episode ends with a great reunion, a great episode. In terms of emotional impact, I thought it was a great episode. Can't wait to see what's next. Now we're in present time with the sins in, finally interacting in season three. So, and we know Estherosa and Zeldris are out there somewhere. Throughout that, like I said before, I don't know what where this leaves Gluxenia and the role, especially since Gluxenia said he's going to look after the forest in King's absence. So that's that's kind of cool. So it leaves an interesting parallel, an interesting dynamic, like I mentioned. But let me know what you guys think down below. I thought it was a great episode. Leave your comments below also. Like this review if you did. Subscribe channel for more Seven Deadly Sins. Catch you guys later. Thanks, guys. Bye.